Well, great morning. It's, uh, as you can see, it's still pitch black outside. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I mean, really, there is no... It, it's past six something already, and you get no light at all anywhere until seven o'clock. Um, so, with that being said, um, I was asked today about Gotama Buddha's wife to speak on her. Well, I don't, I'm sorry to say I don't know much about Gotama Buddha's wife. I don't know whether she. <clears throat> went on the path, you know, after Buddha, or whether she was like most Indian households, you know, that she stayed there and took care of the mother and father, etc. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> so there are a few things I'm going to talk about about this today. Um, there, If you remember, there's Tara, white Tara. She was out in the field, okay, doing her practice, doing meditation. And these two guys come along and they're going, <laughs> you know, oh, you do such lovely practices. Maybe next time, next life, you'll be fortunate enough to be born a man so you can get realization. Oh, isn't that special? <laughs> well, Tara looked at them and said, excuse me, <laughs> I'm already realized, you know, best that you guys uh, take care of your own things. Don't worry about here. And I vow only to be born, reborn as a woman. Okay. And, you know, I think there are more and more women now. Uh, entering enlightenment because it's been so skewed. <clears throat> okay, enlightenment as of the consciousness has nothing to do with the form. You're not higher elevated because you're a male. Okay, has nothing to do with it. The only thing that has to do with that is that in, in especially India, women are so suppressed <clears throat> the men can leave and go seek enlightenment where the women have to stay back, take care of children, take care of his parents, okay? They don't have the option so easily to leave and seek enlightenment. It's not that they are dumbed down, okay? It's that they have not been afforded as much opportunity as the males. Even today, in, uh, you know, Tibetan Buddhism, the women are not given the depth of practices that the men are many times. Okay? So this nonsense has to end. And again, don't think that any country, you know, if you have a brown face and you live in India, that you have more opportunity for realization. You know, don't forget about reincarnation. Don't look at white faces and think, oh, they can't know anything. You know, I actually living in India, I've had them, uh, some of the males, you know, especially the Brahmins, you know, uh, you don't even rate a caste system, looking down their noses. Really? And you know what my response to them is? Oh, you're a Brahmin? Are you a knower of Brahman? No. Originally, the Brahmins were knowers of Brahman. They were the enlightened. Okay? Not somebody that gets it by birth. I said, you're not even out there doing your morning rituals you're supposed to do. So don't sit there, you know, and tell me this nonsense. You're bound up by your own religiosity. Good luck with that. Okay. So there's a lot of misnomers and ridiculousness that's going on. You know, some of us have been born and had our, already had our lifetimes in India. 
and we moved on. And it doesn't matter where you're born. Again, enlightenment is of the consciousness. It has nothing to do with a specific religion. Or if you're male or female. Okay, so let's understand that right away. <clears throat> now let's go on to Hinduism. And versus Christianity. Okay. Now, in if you had in Christianity, in the Bible, it says there are 144 different aspects of God. God the provider. Okay. All of these ones that, that they say are aspects of God. Well, if you took each one of those aspects and turned it into a form so it's more easily related to, then you would have the Hindu pantheon. Okay. So the way I like to say it is all the different gods and goddesses in Hinduism are just simply aspects of the one divine being. They are the, you know, subdivided. Like if you take a light bulb and you have a lampshade and you poke holes in it, there's only one God, but the, all of these different various little lights are aspects of that one God. Okay? Same thing. Same thing. Whether you say Jehovah Jireh, the provider, or that element of peace, okay? It's the same thing. It's the same thing. In Hinduism, they just happen to give it a form so you can relate to one aspect or another aspect. You know, you have Ganesh, dispeller of obstacles, that broke off his tusk <clears throat> to give back to humanity, to aid them, to, you know, dispel things, to give them wisdom, okay? You can also say that God, if you pray to God, that he's a dispeller of obstacles through prayer. Through the Psalms, you get wisdom, okay? Different strokes for different cultures. Same thing. There's only one God. In India as well, they will tell you there is a singular God. And these are, again, basically different aspects. Okay. Now you have uh, Lakshmi. Lakshmi is that one that brings all of the, uh, like, monetary or all the blessings, all of those things of wealth. Now, wealth doesn't always have to be money. doesn't have to be monetary. And I think, it, again, in Christianity, you see that God is the giver of blessings. Same thing. Giver of blessings, giving those things of substance. Okay? So, again, don't get confused because you see all these different projections of that singular aspect. Okay. Now, in again, in in Christianity, it's not so different. Don't forget, you have the Trinity: God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, you have the Trinity. Same thing. The incarnation the flesh, the spirit, the father, which is, again, beyond, beyond, beyond. It's all spirit. Okay. Same thing. So, again, don't get so caught up on, you know, oh, they're worshiping idols and this and that, you know, uh, you can, you can be a Christian and you can be worshiping an idol if you put something up there. Like a lot of people are worshiping Trump. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
So anyway, I just wanted to put that out there to bring a little more understanding so people can start coming together rather than being so divided, you know. If you understand it, that these are all just different aspects of the one eternal God, there's only one God, I don't care what religion you are, it's the same God. It's spirit. God does not have a face. He's not an old man sitting on a throne with a white beard that's up there judging everything. Like the Bible says, karma judges the hearts and the minds. Okay, it's karma. Judges the hearts and the mind, the intent of why you're doing something. And the Bible does not dispute uh, karma and reincarnation. It simply doesn't. Okay? Like they asked, uh, which one was it? They asked if he was um, one of the people reborn. You know, it's, uh, I forget who it was this morning. It's eluding me. Okay. Are you, what was it, Ezekiel come back? So yeah, they were quite aware of reincarnation. Okay. Because they specifically were asking, are you this one that came back? Okay. They also knew about, uh, you know, uh, aliens, etc. Remember the one that lived such an old and he went in the wheel within the wheel, the wheel within the wheel, got in that craft and left. Okay. So there's so much more around there than people are. Um, if you just dig a little deeper and you open up and you want to know the truth, these things will be revealed, okay? These knowledges, these wisdoms will, will come. And uh, again, when you enter realization, everything is laid bare and it's so simple. It's like, you know, <laughs> I could have had realization. <laughs> okay, so you see from, a, again, a different perspective. Everything is laid bare at that point. Like, like Buddha said, I'm awakened. People tell me, oh, you're arrogant, you're this, you're that. No, Buddha said he was awakened. That's all I'm doing, saying I'm awakened. Same thing. I've woken up, that's all. Okay. So, uh, again, you know, people uh, get in these niches and they, they just uh, get so confined and in a box that they think they've got to have this box all labeled and, you know, but they create a jail for themselves rather than something that they're trying to protect themselves. They're creating more obstacles and more of a jail, more difficulties for themselves in their practices and moving forward. Okay. In the end, like I said, there's only one God. There's not many, many gods. And all of these things that you see are just different aspects of that singular divine is. And every being on the planet, everything you see has that kernel of that divine is or else it would have no life. So this idea that somebody is separate from God, they're not, but they're closing that off in denial of it. Like Satan. Let's take Satan for a point. He was the head of the choir. Okay, he was the heavenly angel in charge of the choir. He was not created nasty, negative. He is not, okay, in a point on par with God. Not ever. He became Satan because he got into ego. I want the recognition. It's all about me. I want the recognition. Okay. And so he fell <clears throat> and he took a quarter of the angels with him to do their deeds of destruction or whatever 
it is that they think that they were going to get. Okay. These powers, etc. I'll show you. <laughs> You're not going to show God anything. Okay. God is always paramount. Okay. These others are shadows. Shadow substance. They are a uh, counterfeit. A counterfeit. Okay. God is the diamond. And these are the cubics. Okay. <laughs> Big sparkly on the surface, but really not worth a whole lot. Okay. So uh, that's where that goes. <laughs> Let's look at the Garden of Eden. Okay. You had the first men. Mankind. Adam. Then they took Eve from the rib and created Eve to be a partner. Okay? Conjoined. You leave your mother and father and you become one, like one being. Okay? <clears throat> and remember in the garden, they were um, without knowledge. Okay. They had no reasoning at that point. Everything they had was good. It was pure. They were naked. There was no word for it, naked. It just was what it was. Okay? There were no bad thoughts about it. There were no, you know, none of this drama that's going on. But then what happened? Then you had Satan. Oh, the joy of Satan coming in. You know, they said, well, we can have, eat of every tree of the garden except for that one. Well, why can't you? It's the tree of knowledge. Okay. Well, shouldn't you have knowledge? Okay. So they gave up. Basically, they had given up this innocence that they had. They were just absolutely innocent. And they gave it up because they wanted knowledge of good and evil. All they had to that point was good. But they wanted to know evil as well. Well, we want a chance to, to experience what Satan's experiencing there, okay? We want a little of that ego <laughs> drama. We want to pick and choose our way. Okay, you, you want to do that? Well, you're banished from the garden of the tree of, of uh, long life. That's why they were created then with corporeal bodies, okay? So they couldn't do a whole lot of damage before they got another chance at it again through reincarnation. Okay. So even with that, again, um, God, the energy is very merciful. The bodies, corporeal bodies were created out of the substance, like in this planet, the substance of the minerals, the earth. We are a walking Gaia. We're a walking universe, okay? And we have within us that divine is, that spark of life, okay, that fuels us, motivates us, allows us to gain knowledge. And we're conveniently packaged in a disposable package. <laughs> <laughs> the first recyclable container. <laughs> we are a walking recyclable container. Okay. We come from the earth. We go back to the earth. And the spirit goes forward. Okay. So you can choose to be nasty, negative, think you have these powers. You know, like the little trolls that run around the internet and think they've got a lot of power and they're so, I'm going to show you I'm so strong and they've got really nothing. Okay. <laughs> or 
you can surrender and this is what you find in the path the spiritual path <clears throat> it's all about you have to let go of ego and you have to surrender not my will but thine be done okay and you do the path and you had once like Christ that came to show what the path is this is what you're going to face you're going to face the temptations you're going to face all of these things now whether you're reading the Tibetan Book of the Dead and when Kundalini awakens that's what you do consciously it's a very good map of what is faced in a Kundalini awakening or again you're following the path of Christ you know you're going to have to surrender yourself you walk the path you take the scourging you you continue to give light wherever you can and in the end what happened when he's on the cross he was the closest to to God why have you forsaken me and that's what it feels like you know you can be very religious and holding to God but the moment before realization you have to surrender utterly and it feels why have you forsaken me well you haven't been forsaken but you've got to die that death before death and then you have the resurrection okay understand that then it's the resurrection and that light <clears throat> remember Christ was on the cross and then he went to hell hell couldn't hold him okay than the ascension no matter where you are you're walking that path that's the path that one walks okay so again you know hopefully somebody's gotten something from this <laughs> but everyone you know has to discover these things again for themselves to really uh get it to grok it to get it okay um but again if you are really sincere you read the bible and you will get a lot of knowledge okay if you are sincere and you want to know God above all things then these things will be open to you but again it's not an easy path don't think it's going to be easy that God's like some Santa Claus up there and, and is so enamored by your attention it's just going to give everything you ask for it doesn't work that way <laughs> it doesn't work that way but it's a journey well worth taking. And everybody's on that journey at some point, okay? Some of us a little earlier, some of us a little later. And it doesn't matter where you're at in the journey, not one is higher or lower, okay? We all have the same amount of that divine is within us some of us are just awakened to it and some of us are not yet that's the only difference when you awaken to it and i don't mean an aha moment of logical deduction okay i'm talking about when realization takes place the mind stills there's no more running thoughts you know people tell me oh you're so brave to be out there no there's no bravery here because i don't have that fear I'm not ruled by fear any longer. At one point in my life, yes, I was ruled by fear and I would have been, oh my God, and I don't know, maybe. But when the mind stills, none of that thought comes up. None of it comes up, okay? So you're just in that quietude. Doesn't mean the mind doesn't work, that it's, it's a tool, okay? Consciousness programs the mind, which programs the body. That's the way that works. Everything starts in consciousness first, and then it goes through. The brain is like a, um, like the software that programs the, the computer. Okay, the body's the computer, and you have that program. Software gets downloaded, okay? And then it programs the body and the functions, you know? 
this is why when somebody has a stroke or something, it's so important to get them to start to reprogram that brain immediately. Okay. So important for that. So anyway, well, this has just gone on in a number of different directions this morning. <laughs> But that's the way it is sometimes, you know. Uh, sometimes I really never know what's going to come out. Um, but this morning I knew I wanted to, to explain a little deeper because somebody has said, well, Christianity, we just have one God. Well, you know, you have many aspects of that one God. And it's really, again, the same thing, okay? One just has a projection of, you know, um, <clears throat> these different aspects as different beings. But if you understand, again, if you're going on a path and you're uh, uh, pulled toward Hinduism, again, I say see the different gods as different aspects of the one and different energies. Each one of them has a different energy. Same thing in Christianity. If you are pulled towards good deeds, you're going to be in one energy. If you're more of a contemplative, you'll be in another energy. Okay. Same, same difference. Okay. So anyway, I'm going to leave this here. Thanks for tuning in. This is getting long and it's going to take a long time to upload. <laughs> Let's see if I can get this uploaded this morning. See you online. Aho.